I pulled up in my 6'4 Good day, YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about when you leave the Air Force because it's known that everybody who joins the Air Force will sooner or later have to leave. So this video doesn't really apply to individuals that are retiring, but individuals that are separating from the service, from the Air Force, whether it's four, six, eight, ten years, whatever that may be. The best thing that you can do is prepare for your transition. I know that some of you may want to go back to school, some of you may already have a job lined up, and whatever the case is, is do all the research, ask all the questions, so you have a smooth transition. I used to teach at financial, I used to teach at transition assistance planning, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, which is TAP, and a lot of people were stressed out about their financial world or the next chapter in their lives. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. You're in the service and you have a date of separation. Let's say that is four months away or six months away. You're going to have an out processing checklist. Most of it is now done online. But on that checklist, you will have to go through a course, which is about four hours long. It's mandatory. It's called pre-separation briefing. But that's good information. They'll give you a checklist. You sign that off. And then at the end of that meeting, they'll make you a copy so you have a list of resources available for you. But don't wait for four months, six months to do this. You want to do this if you're separating at least one year out, minimum. And then the next thing is TAP, Transition Assistance Planning, and that's a course. It's usually three or five days. That's mandatory as well. Those fill up pretty quick. Don't wait for the last minute because they're booked. A lot of them are booked, so you may not get a space. You want to do that. You can do that up to uh, a year out as well, maybe two years if you're thinking of separating. Take that course. Three to five days. What does that course talk about? They talk about how to network, your resume, some benefits, the VA briefs, the briefs there as well. The DAV stands for Disabled American Veterans. DAV is important because they're going to look at an individual appointment with you at your medical records. Let's say you think everything is good, great, but have the experts, the DAV rep, review your records and they're going to say, hey, maybe you should file for a VA disability claim based on this or that. They're the experts, they're gonna walk you through that. All you have to do is get a copy of all your medical records and take it to your appointment. They'll review it, they'll have you fill out the application and, and it takes a while, so have them do that. The next thing is, if you are separating, part of your out processing checklist is to meet with an in-service recruiter, whether you want to go into the reserve or not. But you have to go to the appointment and you can tell that recruiter, in-service recruiter say, I'm not interested, if that's the case. Or if you are interested, they're going to tell you, what's your, they're gonna ask you, what's your AFSC? Where are you going? And let's see if we can find you a slot for the reserve. The good thing about that is you, that's a part-time job. I've always said that the Air Force Reserve is a best kept secret with many benefits, medical being one of them, because medical insurance on the outside can be very expensive. Once your contract ends, your medical benefits end as well. In most cases, unless you are, uh, unless you have to leave the Air Force, not because if it's, a, let's say a reduction in force. When I left, it was involuntary, so I had six months of medical benefits after that it ended. But the Air Force Reserve offers that, and it's very inexpensive. One way for you to continue serving and get those medical benefits as well for yourself and your family. The next thing is, if you have under eight years of service in the Air Force, remember, you signed up either for four or six years of active duty time, but you still have a commitment up to the eight year mark, which means the Air Force can technically recall you back if they needed you. And if that's the case, which doesn't happen often, but that, if that's the case, they're gonna con contact you once a year, usually through a muster. A muster is an event that happens maybe once a year and you have to show up for about four hours, but you do get paid for your time. And what they want to do, they mean the Air Force, is make sure that they can contact you 
as needed, when needed, make sure that there's no changes in your medical history or your medical ability. Should the Air Force need to call you back to active duty service, that can happen up to the eight years. However, I haven't seen that happen. Now, musters do happen, and that's usually once a year. And there may be changes on how they do that in the future where they don't have to have you show up, but they'll send you uh, a notification saying this is your annual notification. So reply, and that's how they interact with you. It, once you leave the service, and let's say you're still within that eight-year window, I would recommend that you go and get your military ID card, which will give you access to the commissary and the BX and the fitness center because those are some benefits that you still have up to the eight year mark. Now remember, if you don't join the Air Force Reserve and not that you have to, but your medical benefits end at that point. So you're not gonna have access to medical benefits. When you transition, you may realize that the civilian world is completely different than the military. And that's what I noticed when I left active duty 10 years ago. But I did go into the reserve. You can let your hair grow long if you're a guy, beard, goatee, whatever you want. Uh, and then you may welcome the next chapter of your life, which is good. They're always good chapters. And what I mean by that is, let's say your goal was just to do four years or six years or 10 and you're ready to turn that page. You move forward to the next part of your life, the next chapters and see what happens. Some of you may go back to the workforce doing something similar or something completely different than what you used to do. Some of you may go back to school and use your post 9-11 GI Bill benefits, which is a great benefit as well. But sometimes people say, hey, you know, what do you miss most about being in the military when you were in the military or when you were in the Air Force? And that could be I miss the teamwork. That's how come the reserve is a good option, not for everybody, understandably, but at least it's an option there. Let me talk about the Air Force Reserve. There's the traditional reservist, one week in a month. There's an IMA, which stands for Individual Mobilized Augmentee, and that you can work on the other side of the country if you want to, sometimes overseas, if you find a slot, and then you'll have to do your time out there. But you can usually do it all at once. It's 12 days per year and another two weeks as well. So let's just say about a month as well. Or you could become an Air Reserve Technician, which is in the reserve, your dual status, your civilian, and you're also an uh, Air Force Reservist. That's another option. But something I want you to think about is if you separate from the military, the Air Force, and then you go over one year and you don't go into the Air Force Reserve, then if you go back and change your mind and say, hey, I wanna go back to the Air Force Reserve, you will have to go back to MAPS and do all that physical uh, appointments as, as you did when you first entered the Air Force. If you go straight from active duty into the reserve, you don't have to do that anymore. Things to think about are life insurance. SGLI is an option. There are other options as well. So whatever option works best for you, make sure you have life insurance should something happen to you, especially if you're married. And that's something for you to think about. It's very important. Before you leave the service, take care of those great benefits. For example, if you need a power of attorney, if you need a will, get that done because that's for free. Whereas sometimes if you have to do that outside of the Air military or the Air Force, you will have to pay. You do what's best for yourself. Definitely take advantage of your time in the military. And if you transition out and never go back to the Air Force, make sure that you are prepared for the next chapters. I see it all the time, people successfully transition. The reason I say that is because I wouldn't want you to transition and say, hey, I didn't realize how good it was when I was in. Once you separate from the Air Force active duty, it's kind of tough to get back on active duty if that's what you want to, to do. So the reserve is a great option. Do what's best. I would also recommend that you definitely speak with someone who's been through that process before and preferably somebody that's been through that process recently, as opposed to somebody like myself who left active duty 10 years ago. Fast forward now, I'm on active duty again as a reservist, Air Guard Reserve, AGR. But those are very few slots. So it's about 2,800 or so worldwide. Very few slots to get into. I hope this has been helpful. Definitely ask questions. If I missed something, 
because I did it all from here. I usually write notes and I did it today. Definitely ask a question, uh, share any information that I may have missed, and always make the most of your day. Have a great day. Take care.